Morning Church family. As a, a Tuckwell family, we're reading our way through the Bible. We've got to the Minor Prophets and we're in Micah. And I was sitting down with the kids and we were reading Micah chapter 6. And it's a, it's a dramatic chapter of the Bible. It's a courtroom scene. And God calls the courtroom to order and he prepares to lay his charge against his people, against Israel. And so as you, you read through the first half of chapter 6, you're, you're listening in to see what complaint God has against his people. Listen with me. I'm going to read Micah chapter 6, verses 1 to 8. You could grab a Bible and follow along with me. Listen to what the Lord says. Stand up, plead my case before the mountains. Listen, let the hills hear what you have to say. Hear you mountains, the Lord's accusation. Listen. You everlasting foundations of the earth. For the Lord has a case against his people. He's lodging a charge against Israel. My people, what have I done to you? How have I burdened you? Answer me. I brought you up out of Egypt and redeemed you from the land of slavery. I sent Moses to lead you. Also Aaron and Miriam. My people, remember what Balak, the king of Moab, plotted. And what Balaam, son of Beor, answered. Remember your journey from Shittim to Gilgal, that you may know the righteous acts of the Lord. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow down before the exalted God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will it all be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousand rivers of oil? Shall I offer my firstborn for my transgression? The fruit of my body for the sin of my soul. He has shown you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. It's an extraordinary moment in the book because God's people have clearly been going through all emotions of worshipping God. That they seem to be good at their sacrifices, offer to willing to, to offer a calf, thousands of rams, ten thousand rivers of oil, even and it's a horrific moment, but but even a firstborn child as a sacrifice to God. They're happy with the rituals of religion. But God says no, actually, that, that's not what I'm after. And, and he, he boils it all down in verse 8. Th this is what I'm after. For you to act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. To act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. You think about those three things and you realise they all relate to, to the way that we interact with each other. So the, the justice, the mercy and the humility seems to be about our relationships with each other. So here are God's people and, and they're all worried about the vertical, bringing their offerings to God, trying to, to please God. But they are ignoring the horizontal relationships, their relationships with those around them. And so they're lacking the, the justice, the mercy, the humility that God calls for. It's why when Jesus is asked what the greatest commandment is, he, he gives two. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind and strength. And love your neighbour as yourself. He's saying you can't separate the vertical from the horizontal. How we love each other is how we love God. I remember growing up a, a moment in my my home church and um, it actually happened fairly regularly there was there was one woman who she really struggled with the kids in the the church family um, particularly when they made noise and so she would be there in worship hands raised singing her heart out to god and suddenly there'd be a kid behind her gurgling or mumbling or whatever making a noise and she would turn around and give this most enormous scowl and then she'd go back to hands raised praising you god and as a young, I don't know what I would have been, you know, 9, 10, 11 year old, it, it really jarred because you could see this disconnect. How can you be praising God and then scowling at one of his people? 
And yet God's saying that this is the danger that we all have. We sort of go through the, the rituals of religion, worry about the vertical, and we ignore the horizontal. And so my challenge for myself today, as I seek to live today to worship King Jesus, to live my life for him, is who is it that he's placed around me that he is calling me to love? Where are those challenges going to be? Where am I going to struggle to show justice and mercy and humility? To live a life knowing that I am a sinner and to, to show that mercy which God has shown to me so that my worship of God may be wholehearted, whole life worship. I'm going to lead us in a prayer. Our God, our Father, thank you that you are perfectly just. And we praise you for, for the mercy that you have shown each one of us. Please remind us today of that mercy, of the great price you paid for our forgiveness. And as we remember Jesus' arm stretched out wide on the cross, Father, please grow in us an awareness of our sin, uh, a clarity about how far short of your perfect standards we fall, that we would be humble and that we would show mercy and that we would love the justice that you love and that we would we would model that to those around us help us we pray in jesus name and for his glory amen